I kind of wish Lenovo would have followed through with this Legion handheld. It would have been released a lot earlier than some of the others on the market, and overall I think it would have done a pretty good job. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an unreleased handheld from Lenovo known as the Legion Play. Recently, these have been popping up online and I was able to get my hands on one and I was really interested to see what they had here. Now you might notice this one does look a little beat up and that's because these are development units. The ones that are on the market right now may have some scratches, some imperfections, but the one that I have here is fully functional. Everything on it is working and one of the first things I noticed when I booted it up was the screen. I think they chose a great screen here. It's a 1080p IPS display with HDR. You can disable it or enable it from software. And when it comes to the overall design, I actually enjoy using this thing. It's a nice thin unit. We've got our shoulder buttons. We've also got our triggers, and these are linear or analog. And along the top, we've got our power button, volume rocker, and a micro SD card slot. I think that some of these may have supported LTE or even 5G in China. Along the bottom, we've got a USB Type-C port for charging the battery up, plus it does video out, and the 3.5mm audio jack. I've seen a few color variants of this floating around, but you got to keep in mind that this was a developer unit only released in China. I was able to go into the settings and swap it over to English, and as you can see, we've got kind of a game launcher front end here, and this handheld does share a lot of similarities to the Logitech G Cloud. We'll talk more about that in a second, and as you can see, we've got a bunch of apps installed. Now, not a lot came pre-installed, a few Chinese app markets, which actually do work. I can get in and download games, but I did sideload a bunch of stuff so we could test this thing out. So game mode is kind of the stock front end here, but we can also go into settings and swap this over to uh, just regular kind of tablet mode. As you can see, we've got basically a stock little Android interface here. And I was also able to get Google Play up and running on this unit. It's running Android 11, so it did make it quite easy to get that installed. But one of the cool features here, at least with the display, is it does support HDR. So we can enable it for videos or game mode, but you know, in the stock UI, HDR isn't going to be working. But this screen does look really good. I mean, it's definitely one of the better screens that I've seen on the market in a handheld like this. And it's very, very close to the Logitech G Cloud. Personally, I think the one on the Legion Play here with HDR enabled does look better than Logitech G Cloud screen. But both of them are really good IPS displays. The built-in joysticks, D-pad, and face buttons here do work really well, but there's no built-in mapper, so games that don't natively support controllers won't work unless you install a third-party mapper the way it is. And I'm sure if this was ever to come to market, they would have installed something like that. That way we could use the built-in controls with games like Genshin Impact. But it does natively work with games that do support controllers, except for Call of Duty Mobile. That's the only one I couldn't get it working with. And around back here, we do have these analog triggers. Overall, I do like the design of it. It's a pretty light handheld. We've got front-facing dual stereo speakers, and this thing does get pretty loud. So in this video, I'm just going to be testing a few things out here and there. I've got some native Android games, some emulation, and some streaming apps that I want to test out. But first up, let's check out the specs of this unit here. And then we're going to kind of compare it to the Logitech G Cloud itself. As far as we know, if this was ever released, it would have been called something along the lines of the Legion Play. They've codenamed it Zelda. For the CPU, we've got a Snapdragon 720G. GPU is the Adreno 618. 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, a 7 inch 1920 by 1080 60 hertz display with HDR, AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, a 7000 milliamp hour battery, and right now the only operating system I have access to is the development build and it's running Android 11. So taking a look at the specs here, they were probably going to kind of promote this as a streaming device, just like the Logitech G Cloud. And, you know, if we take a closer look at the spec comparison, there's not much difference between the two handhelds. The Legion Play does support HDR with this display, and it supports HDMI over USB Type-C. But other than that, the only real difference is the design itself. Logitech went with a much different design. In my opinion, the Logitech G Cloud is a bit more comfortable to hold on to. It's got those larger uh, palm rests on it. Now, uh, the Legion Play never hit the market officially. These are uh, kind of beta tester or maybe even development units that people are getting their hands on right now out of China. If everything would have went correctly, this would have been announced in 2021 and maybe released at the end of 2021. But unfortunately, we never got the Lenovo version here. 
And even though this came pre-installed with a development version of Android 11, we can still test out some games here. I wanted to go over a few native Android games, some uh, cloud streaming apps, or maybe even streaming apps, and emulation. First on the list, we've got a native Android game, Asphalt 9, not super hard to run, but I just wanted to show you this in action. We're maxed out from the settings, and the built-in controls just work right out of the box. I didn't have to do any configuration or anything like that. With a lot of these Android games, it's going to detect it as a generic controller, and you can use it. But there was one game it just didn't work with, and that's Call of Duty Mobile. This one is a bit finicky. Uh, officially, this only supports like Xbox controllers or PlayStation controllers. Some third-party controllers on the market do natively work with this, but unfortunately, the built-in controls here just weren't detected. So instead of installing a third-party mapper app, I had to use the touchscreen here, but we are at high settings, 60 FPS, and the 720G has more than enough power to run this game. It's a very well-optimized Android game. I also wanted to check out a few game streaming and cloud apps. So first up, we've got Steam Link. This is streaming from my PC in the house, so uh, it's actually really great. I've got it set to beautiful, we're at 60 FPS. And the Legion Play here only has Wi-Fi 5, kind of like the uh, Logitech G Cloud. It would have been nice if they would have added Wi-Fi 6 to all of these devices, but either way you look at it, with something like Moonlight or Steam Link, you're going to get more than enough bandwidth to play these games. I also wanted to test out a little bit of cloud gaming, so I went with uh, Game Pass or Xbox Cloud Streaming. Forza Horizon 5, we're just on my 5 GHz network. I do have a Wi-Fi 6 router, so I really haven't run into many issues while uh, using cloud gaming apps like this or GeForce Now. I will admit, when it comes to Xbox Cloud Gaming, it doesn't look as good as something like GeForce Now. The clarity isn't there, but overall, we're getting good performance. This game is playable. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was some emulation. So this is running directly on the Snapdragon 720G in the system. Dreamcast using ReDream, got Fighting Vipers 2 here running at 60 FPS. With the 720G, as long as the game's compatible with the ReDream or even the Flycast core, you're going to be able to run these Dreamcast games at full speed, even with a little bit of upscaling going on. Next up, we've got some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Vulcan back in, 2x resolution with God of War Chains of Olympus. So this game is running at 60, FPS counters up in the top right hand corner. And when it comes to easier to emulate games, even something like Tekken 6 on the 720G or a handheld like this, we can go up to 4x resolution. But this is kind of a go-to test for a lot of people, you know, the God of War series on PSP. As long as you can run this game, you're not going to have much issue with a lot of the other compatible games when it comes to the standalone version of PPSSPP. When it comes to PS2 on the Snapdragon 720G, doesn't do a great job. You will have to use a lot of cycle skips. Here's Gran Turismo 4, and unfortunately we can't stick this at 60, even with the resolution set at 0.75. I've tested the OpenGL back in and the Vulcan back in, but there are easier to emulate PS2 games like Crash Bandicoot that will run at full speed. And finally here, a little bit of GameCube emulation. With this, I'm using Dolphin MMJR. This is an easier one to emulate because we're not working with a super powerful chip, but I have found that, you know, with some hacks on, the Snapdragon 720G can run a lot of GameCube games at full speed. If you wanted to go with something like, obviously, Mario Kart, Sunshine, Billy Hatcher, Time Spy, games like those are going to run pretty decently on this hardware. There was one last thing I wanted to show off here. Like I mentioned, this does support video over USB Type-C, and I wish all Android devices did this. Especially given the fact that we've got a 16x9 aspect ratio display on the handheld itself. While connecting it to a monitor or a TV, it will fill the whole display. So we're not going to get those black bars on the top, bottom, or the sides. And this will be really awesome for big screen gaming on a device like this. I was actually under the impression that when Lenovo originally announced the Legion Play that this was going to have the Snapdragon 888. But seeing that the development units had the 720G, we're not sure exactly what kind of hardware would have been released if this ever came out to the public. I think they just kind of gauged the community and saw that the price tag they would have to sell this at to make a profit on it wouldn't make sense for a lot of people to pick it up. But some other companies have come to the game with these Android-based handhelds, and you know, it's really up to you.
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If this would have came to market on time at a price tag of $199, would it have been something you were interested in? Would you have skipped it or wanted to see higher specs in the Legion play? I'd love to know your thoughts. And like always, thanks for watching.